Hello everyone, it's me, the Fruit Basket. Now, despite a uh, somewhat absence of normal videos from me, and cars from Oklahoma for some reason getting quite a bit of traction in the algorithm, I thought today I'm just going to do a Stormworks, you know, vehicle showcase of vehicles that I've made, you know, because not many people, whatever, are part of the Stormworks community. It's a small community, I feel that is pretty underappreciated actually. There's some pretty cool builders out here that deserve a lot more than they get. But just for whatever, a small video or large, depending on what this happens to be, uh, will be probably uploaded by today. Whatever today is. I don't know. But yeah, so first of the vehicle showcase. It's a small and not very, you know, good-looking aircraft that I use for what I'd like to say, personal use. It has a very high range, medium speed. It is very, 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 when I say this, uh, good on fuel, like, per kilometer. This is at, like high throttle, we're not consuming much fuel right now, and the engine temp is very stable. This aircraft is also, as a, whatever, added benefit, very good at landing. I mean, you can land this thing nearly anywhere. You can land it on top of hangars, easily. You can land it on top of aircrafts, as long as they have a long enough top and flat enough top. This makes it a very versatile aircraft for multi-purpose and personal use and whatever, just sightseeing. It is known as the L-P-A-C-T-C, but known more as the Clubber. The reason because of this is most of my planes have nicknames because of their normal actual model name being too long to just say quickly. Because L-P-A-C-T-C -C would be very annoying to say when you could just say the clubber. So, clubber, aside now, we have the LFI, which is its name. It's still a very work in progress, being the reason why it has no extra paint and it's just a one color aircraft so far. This is an electric one. Having a infinite generator and a one electric motor to power a fan. It has infinite range, and is actually incredibly maneuverable, and just fun to fly. Next up, we have the PM60 Hurricane. Part of the PM series, it is uh, pretty basic when it comes to, you know, just general stuff. It has a couple of seats, a pretty ugly looking uh, nose, to be honest, I'm pretty bad at building, so whatever, take what you can get. A unique landing gear position for a jet aircraft, at least, and its body shape. This has a pretty decent range for a jet, having around 300 kilometers of maximum flight distance at full throttle. Over here is a, one of my older aircrafts that I'm not too fond of, the SP Sprout. Now, being older, it doesn't look as good, and it has less, you know, stuff. The interior has just a couple seats, a couple other seats, and a stupid thing that I was not smart enough to make, properly at least. As you can see that you bump your head on this whenever you're trying to go anywhere. This one has a very low range having only around 50 kilometers maximum at full throttle. However, uh, somewhat of an upside is the fact that it can float. Not a big upside, but still an upside. This, similar to the PM60 Hurricane, is the PM40. It's very similar in body and everything, but the PM40 is a little bit different. The PM40, instead of having jets, has other engines. These engines can be started by simply putting the throttle to 2, 
and activating the required buttons, which will cause the engines to, of course, begin and start working. However, there's an alternative way if, say, the battery is too low to actually start the engines using a manual starter. This way is much less how you would say probably wanted to have to do. However, it is incredibly functional in a case where you need to do this. You will use both these cranks. These cranks will slowly spin up the engines. Once they reach a certain amount of RPM, this will provide a small engine in the back enough power to start the main engines. Now you can cut the clutch to those smaller engines, and the main engines will be active. This can be useful for scenarios where, say, the battery has died from generators failing, and or just, I don't know, EMPs hitting. Over here, you have what is known as the Oasia. Uh, another older aircraft being the reason why it looks more like what would be in a YouTube 2017 Top 10 Biggest Planes video, but it's also somewhat unique in the fact that it has bathrooms, which most of my planes do not. It has simple, you know, warning lights for turbulence and such. For a multiplayer, you can turn those on to warn people aboard, you know, if they should be sitting, if they should be standing, what you know, what would be recommended, because Multiplayer Stormworks, if you've played the game, you will know it is incredibly janky and very, very risky to stand up in a moving aircraft. Actually, no, a moving anything. It has a medium range, medium speed, going around 150 meters per second at full throttle. However, a downside of this is that, for some reason, Despite the weight being balanced directly on the wings, as well as several hidden fins to control the aircraft, if it goes above 170 meters per second, the aircraft will indefinitely begin pulling up. You cannot stop this, even if you put the flaps to a negative position, and flaps, uh, whatever, cannot help it. If you go all the way down on the elevators, it will not help it will continue pulling up for eternity. This is quite the downside, as you cannot go as fast as the engines will take you, because if you try, well, you're simply just going to lose control. Now, what I like to consider the 747 of Nova Aviation, you know, our trademark, you know, number one aircraft, the SPJ F-6 Sage. Now, the Sage is a little bit more recent. It has very high range, as well as a ton of fuel in the front tank, but as well as an auxiliary tank in the rear section that provides similar, very close uh, amount when compared to the uh, main fuel tank. Which, as you can see if I no clip here, this area is flooded, this area is also flooded with fuel, that is the secondary tank, the main tank is below and within the wings, as well are the batteries. The reason why everything's, you know, so hidden in the front, so barren, is because this plane can survive and still function after hitting its front section against anything when it's moving. Normally, uh, you know, your seat would be damaged if you hit something. If your seat gets damaged, in Stormworks, you know, you lose everything that the seat's connected to. You know, your roll, it's gone. Everything is gone when your seat goes down, as well as a gyro, if you have one. When that's broken, your aircraft has no way of controlling itself. This one has some things at the front, but most of them at the back top. This way, if the aircraft hits something for some cause, you will be able to simply press a button located here, backup sensors, which will change the control system from the front one to the rear one, allowing you to fly if the front one is damaged 
for a extended period of time because there will most likely be a fuel leak. As well as having a sync engines, what this means is, if you do not know what it means, I'll describe it quickly. Let's say these engines on the left are at 50 RPS. The engines on the right are at 10. This will cause, of course, the, the plane to turn. But with sync engines on, the engines on the left will start sharing the RPS with the right. So the 50 from the left will start making the right go up to 20 and until they both get to 30. This is useful in case, say, an engine gets damaged, you will allow the plane to stay stable with, you know, some pretty bad damage as well as uh, engine failures or explosions, as well as a backup battery just in case, let's say, I don't know, Sun sticks C4 on it in multiplayer and you lose battery. It also has dash monitors to view certain things, such as a little mini map that you can control. Okay, that's a little bit problematic. I don't know why I did that. Uh, a little map that you can control and, you know, see s stuff around you if you don't have whatever your actual map unlocked fully that will allow you to see where things are. It also has a radar and a camera. The camera does not have night vision yet. It is just a normal camera that can be used to view stuff, say, despite you being able to do that, I guess. This does not have anything special, though. It's only about engine RPS, generator output, fuel, and battery levels. My favorite thing, though, is the automatic flight mode. This will activate a system located back here where all these microcontrollers will function together to make the aircraft 100% autonomous. It will automatically start engines when they drop below a certain RPS, automatically keep them at a cruising speed, automatically turn on generators flaps when necessary. It will also automatically attempt to land when it reaches its waypoint, automatically stabilize itself, turn on lights. It will fly itself, essentially. You can press that button, set a location, teleport there, and the plane will fly itself and attempt to land itself at wherever you've set it to. The interior is very basic and ugly, as most of my creations are. You have a couple of seats, more seats, a front section is how you access the cockpit, and a room full of gear for missions that you might need stuff for, such as first aid kits, night vision, parachutes, which these are also doors which you can open in order to, say, parachute out if that becomes a necessary thing to do during, say, an emergency. Over here we have the most recent of our aircrafts, the Bear. The M4AL Bear is quite the large aircraft, being the biggest in comparison to all the others, not only in wingspan, but also length and width. This one also has the best range out of any aircraft I have made. Having a maximum, not maximum, but at full throttle, you know, cruising stuff, it will have a range of 500 kilometers, which, in Stormworks terms, is enough to fly from the lowest part of the map all the way to the highest part of the map without any refuel needed, as well as the ability to go back and forth three times. It also features two restrooms for purposes that are pretty obvious, several seats for passengers, as this is a passenger aircraft. With these many seats is also bigger seats for a kind of first class, this being uh, economy. However, there are also two VIP rooms, which feature a bed, as well as two seats, a couple drinks, a table, and just in general, more privacy, as you have your own room to yourself. It also has two crew seats for, well, crew members. Despite it having around three times the range of the Sage over there, this one actually has nearly the same maximum speed, but for three times the range. Being a turboprop, you can use gearboxes to, you know, have the engines 
when they are at, say, 20 RPS, the propellers can be moving at 200 with enough gearboxes. This allows the plane to get incredible amounts of efficiency while still getting great amounts of speed. This plane also has, in system-wise, a fuel calculator for fuel calculation, of course, which will show you fuel usage per kilometer per minute, distance till empty, time till empty. You also have an estimated time of arrival for a GPS system when you have a waypoint set in, which can also tell you if you aren't going to make it to your uh, destination. Because let's say your distance to empty is below the uh, whatever this what this says, then that means that you do not have enough fuel and you're going to have to land somewhere. That is about it for this video. However, I'm probably going to record a couple more today for uh, whatever uploading today maybe upload a couple more tomorrow i don't know but just for a little quick update on what's been happening and stuff and why i have like a f six month break after you know uploading the video named kanye west that for some reason got age restricted i have no idea why but uh yeah hope to see y'all in the next video and what the heck and goodbye.